We're looking at the dilation basics here. Let's start with just a few things that we actually know about dilations. We talk about dilating or the dilation of our pupil. And what that means is that the pupil will um, change based on, not get bigger or smaller. Well, the pupil does actually, um, based on the amount of light in the room. This little example here, these cute little penguins or whatever, um, shows us a dilation. Why do I know it's a dilation? Because again, these guys are proportional to each other. There's been no distortion other than size. They're proportional. And I know that they've been shrunk. Why do I know it's a reduction or a shrinking? Is because the image is smaller. I can kind of like see that, uh, you know, we we got, they got shrunk down here. We see that idea that things got smaller going from the pre-image to the image. We also know a few things about uh, the rule, don't we? Um, the coordinate rule, we, we would say that this is a dilation. We would also say that this is a dilation. And not only do we know that these are dilations, we know that this first one here is an enlargement because things are getting three times bigger. And the next one is a reduction because things are getting half the size. So we know a few things. We also know that it's not isometric. And the reason we know that is because the size physically changes and to be isometric, it must be identical. So we need to get a little bit formal here. First, we know that a dilation will always have a center, usually O, the origin does not have to be that though. And uh, it will have a scale factor, usually uh, denoted by K. You've seen maybe how this is written, but it would be like this, dilation was centered at O for uh, the K value, and then you know triangle ABC or whatever it is. Now again, K uh, could be a it will be a number, right? Like two times a dilation of two or so on. Again, this is the center of dilation, but it could be O, it could be the point P, it could be a point on the diagram, whatever it is. Now a dilation has a couple of cases or different things that could happen. So we're going to kind of look at one at a time. This first one um, deals with this idea of P, the point P, not being at the center. Now this is actually the normal case, so think about that. So here is O the center, here is point P out here somewhere that is not on that line. Now what it says is uh, where P prime will lie on the ray. So all dilations have to do with rays. Rays are very important in this process because the idea is that you are dilating every point up and down the ray. If you dilate by a value greater than one, you're gonna push P prime out this way. If you dilate by a value between zero and one, it's gonna reduce it and move it into this way. And that's how every point in the plane is getting moved up and down its accompanying ray. So as it says up above, the scale factor is positive, all right? And then it's got some kind of tricky language over here. O, O prime, P, so O, P prime, O, P. This ultimately denotes what's called the scale factor. K is often the scale factor. And a better way to think about it maybe than O, P prime there, maybe that's confusing, that would be the image divided by the pre-image value. This is always, listen to me, always the order that things go for scale factor. The image is on top, the pre-image is on the bottom. Think about the effects of that. So if uh, the image was ended up being four in length and the pre-image began as two, then that was a scale factor of two times bigger. So again, if the number on top, the final item, the image is bigger than the pre-image, that was a, an enlargement. If the image on top was smaller than the original one, then it would be a reduction that would take place. So let's say we did do a dilation of two. What that would mean is the original length here, OP, got dilated to two times out to here. I want you to notice that it goes once and then twice. 
Some students want to start counting the two times from P. Everything originates from O, the center of dilation, once, twice. If we were to um, dilate by one half, which we'll kind of talk about in a second, but that would only go this far, right? So, so it would put our P prime closer to O. Uh, an enlargement, which is in this particular case, the one we're looking at, um, greater where it's greater than one would push things further down the line and a reduction would bring it closer to it. So here's a little cleaner example. So do you see how the ratio of the image compared to the pre-image is greater than one? K is greater than one. And I can see that in the diagram because P prime is further away. Let's take a guess here at what the scale factor would be. So this is a, a distance of one, whatever, it's the original length. So this is probably to get P prime, I don't know, maybe 1.5 or 1.4, doesn't look like quite one and a half, but this is a scale factor greater than one, and so it's pushed P prime further away. In the example below, you see that P prime is actually closer to O. And because of that, I know what they're already telling me, but the ratio of the image to the pre-image is somewhere between zero and one because this was a reduction. And so I can expect what I see, which is that P prime is closer to O because of that. All dilations move up and down rays. A ray is the only thing that points are moving on, and it's a ray based off of the center, and then through every point in the plane, and points move back and forth on that ray. If you remember back when we did properties of the isometric motions, one of the properties we talked about was the idea of invariance or an invariant objects. And in the case of a reflection, if you were invariant, you were on the line, A equals A prime, you wouldn't move. If you were a rotation uh, about a point, that point of rotation would not move. Well, there is obviously a invariant point at the center as well. The center will not move nor, any, well, the center will not move in a dilation. It must stay invariant. So if a dilation took place and you're told that P is its own image, then it had to be the center. Let's talk one more thing about scale factors, and it has to do with a negative scale factor. I think it will do what you will expect it to do, but it does need to be talked about. So we do know that if we use a scale factor of two or three, it pushes out the ray. If I used one half or one third or three fourths, it would move it into this range. So what's the impact of a negative? So for instance, if we said that K equals negative two. Now again, if we ignored the negative, two would place us out here but where would negative two take us? Well, I think you know what to expect. Basically, this ray has an opposite ray that runs the opposite direction. And so if your original guy here, P, takes you there, then negative two would take you one of those and two of those in the opposite direction. A way to think about it, maybe, is that had you gone uh, double out here to P prime, it would be like a rotation to the, of 180 to the other way. And that's ultimately that's what's happening, is that whatever we're looking at one direction, a negative would go the opposite way. So likewise, if uh, we had uh, K equaling negative one half, well, one half would land us about here that would be the positive uh, scale factor of one half. And so the normal P, if it was a full one P would be here. And so in a likewise manner, P prime would be here if we had a negative scale factor. So a negative scale factor just basically means opposite direction. And 
again, all things start from the center, not from the point P, but always from the center. This video ends here, but your activity just is beginning. There's a nice activity that's going to have you now using GeoGebra find out the impact of dilation on distances. How does distance get affected by a dilation? On slope. How does the slope get impacted when you dilate an object? And finally, on angles. So when you're done that, you should be able to say, oh, when I dilate something, um, you know, this is what it does to the distances of the shape. This is what it does to the slope of the sides of that shape. And that's what this does to, to the angle. So let's just give you a visual starting cue. So there's segment AB, and we're going to dilate it. Remember, we make our rays. And let's say we dilated it by two. So we would move A out its ray double. So here's our A prime. And let's move out B its double out here. And I'm just kind of roughing it in, but it'd be somewhere out here. And this is what we get. So what you're about to investigate is the impact on distances. How does the original get impacted to be here? You're going to look at angles. Uh, how about what is, how is this angle in here relate to its image angle? How does this angle here relate to its image angle? And then also we're going to look at uh, the slope. You know, how does the slope get impacted? Enjoy the activity, it's fun.